rolling on November 9th, 2017, where it's a beautiful day in Los Angeles. The sunshine is shining, but my cameras aren't behaving today. We ran out of all the batteries at the Walkler event. And today, we're going to debate the third debate of this class meeting, which is actually de came up randomly, is debate 14, which asks the question, should we ban children from receiving any religious instruction? Preaching or ceremony? I repeat, should we ban children <laughs> from receiving any religious instruction? Preaching or ceremony. On the affirmative is Russell. On the negative is Haley. Right, this proposition will be presented as a policy debate case taken from the affirmative stance that children <coughs> should be banned from receiving any religious instruction, preaching, or ceremony. This house is defined as the United States federal government. What is the problem? Children that receive religious instruction are likely to have religion be an integral part of their lives. When young, naive children are taught that the absolute truth is that they were created by God and they need to follow his commands, they are very likely to believe it. According to Helena Kupra, a religious scholar at the University of Helsinki in 2016, in the sociology of religion, the impact of the childhood family on the development of adulthood religiosity is, offered, is often considered crucial. Many religions contain untrue and unhealthy teachings. According to John Kelsey, an author and a research professor at Florida State University in 2008, even if there are ways of being religious that have good effects or involve considerable exercise of rational capacity, there are nonetheless other modes of religious practice that involve cruelty, indiscriminate warfare, and the rejection of ordinary canons of reason. For example, Christianity teaches that homosexuality is evil, and people that participate in homosexuality will go to hell. Children that receive religious instruction are often taught that the religion being taught is the absolute truth. Being taught that their religion is the absolute truth can easily lead to non-tolerance of anyone that does not abide by their beliefs. People's fervent belief in their religion can lead to persecution, terrorism, and war. How big is the problem? In a word, huge. Religion has been creating conflict all over the world for thousands of years. There are way too many religious conflicts to cover them all, but some notable examples include the Crusades, the Inquisition, the Middle East, and modern terrorism. The Crusades were a series of religious war be wars between Christians and Muslims started primarily to secure control of holy sites considered sacred by both groups. The bloody, violent, and often ruthless conflicts propelled the status of European Christians. The Inquisition. The Inquisition was a judicial procedure and later an institution that was established by the papacy and sometimes by secular governments to combat heresy. Those accused of heresy would have to appear in court without a lawyer and face punishments from being ostracized to being chained up in solitary confinement. In the Middle East, Jews and Muslims have been fighting in the Holy Land for more than 3,000 years. A recent example is the 1948 war. More than 700,000 Jews in eight Arab countries were forced to flee for their lives, their property ransacked, their schools, hospitals, synagogues, and, and cemeteries exploriated or destroyed. Modern terrorism. On September 11th, terrorist attacks were carried out by Al-Qaeda, a group of extremist militant Muslims devoted to establishing an independent Islamic state. They believe that the United States is an infidel because it does not govern in a way consistent with their beliefs. Another extremist militant Muslim group called ISIS, ISIS 
which is also anti-Western and devoted to establishing an independent Islamic state, seized huge chunks of land in Iraq and Syria, forced 13 and a half million Syrians from their homes, and carried out over 70 terrorist attacks in over 20 countries, including attacks in Brussels, Nice, Berlin, Istanbul, Manchester, and just nine days ago, New York. I want to be clear that the beliefs of these groups are very extreme and not consistent with the vast majority of Muslims. However, religion is the motive behind these attacks. Why do we have the problem? Religious instruction at a young age. Truths taught at a young age are likely to be believed for life. Many of these teachings would be met with considerable skepticism by a rational adult. A longing for purpose and belonging cause people to believe in religion. The purpose of life and the best way to live your life are questions that people often answer with religion. Believing in a religion, no matter how ridiculous, offers people a purpose. A fear of death causes people to turn or to believe in religion. People don't want to believe that their consciousness will one day cease to exist. It is more comforting to believe that you and your loved ones will live forever in a place that is all good. Religion offers that comfort. The mystery of the universe causes people to believe in religion. People believe religion because it offers a simple and comforting answer to the universe. What is the solution? Ban children from receiving religious instruction. Religion is not inherently bad. In fact, many religions have some healthy guidelines for living and offer people comfort and support. However, children should not receive any religious instruction, preaching, or ceremony until they are old enough to make a rational decision for themselves. This can be accomplished by requiring public and private schools to educate their students about several religions in an unbiased and purely educational way. <clears throat> students should learn the basic teachings and beliefs of several religions with the understanding that religion is not the absolute truth that everyone should abide by, but personal beliefs that provide personal benefit. No one, especially children, should be taught that their religion is the absolute truth. Everyone will have different beliefs and no one should push their beliefs on others. The advantages. If people have a healthier perspective on religion provided through education, they are much less likely to engage in religious conflicts. A reduction in the amount of persecution, terrorism, and war in the world is a huge advantage. Not only will countless lives be saved or improved, but the reduction in economic losses will lead to a better society. Banning children from receiving religious instruction, preaching, or ceremony will be a difficult task met with huge resistance. However, the benefits of creating a more understanding and accepting culture okay. with less persecution or terrorism is worth the effort. On balance, I now stand open for cross-examination. Stay up there in the center, please, sir. Stand close to each other like you like each other. <coughs> Good. Stand a little over that way. Good. Okay, begin. Okay, so um, my first question is, can, so if children were to receive religious instruction when they're younger, when they're older, can they still make decisions for themselves and maybe change their religion or leave that religion? Um, absolutely. Um, I, this, um, this policy brief is only concerned with the, um, with religion and children, um, adults are free to practice whatever they wish. Okay. Um, also, so power stance, Haley. I always do that. Okay. So does um, so comparative education, religious education in schools? Why is that unique to your side of the resolution? Um, it religion is an integral part of life that cannot be avoided. And it would be a much um, healthier way of um, introducing children to religion in an unbiased um, way with um, mul teaching multiple religions um, instead of only one religion. Okay. Does that solution currently exist? Um, there are some schools that teach comparative religion. However, um, there are no rules about how parents may educate their children, um, which is the real issue. Okay, and if the problem is, is religious instruction at a young age, why is it that many terrorists have been radi radicalized on the internet once they're adults? 
Um, um, radicalization as an adult is obviously a possibility, but so is um, from children. And what about pacifist religions like Buddhism? Are we going to ban those as well? Um, Buddhism, despite its um, principles, um, uh, Buddhist monks have um, revolted in several countries, leading to um, many uh, casualties. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, Power Stan Taylor for your speech. Hi, Haley. On the negative stance of this debate, I agree with the criteria and definitions put forth by my opponent. Um, so, getting into this resolution, it's really important to look at what this world necessarily is going to look like. The, a world where the United States federal government, as my opponent set as the um, this house in the definition, the federal government is going to ban religion in a way. So that is, first of all, just unconstitutional and goes against a lot of religious liberties and freedoms, and I'm going to explain why this is um, going to be, um, this is not going to be more beneficial. So if I prove that banning religion would be less beneficial than the status quo in which children uh, are able to learn uh, religion, I will win this debate. So. Uh, I believe that the problem here is actually is that religious liberties are and parental rights are being threatened. So, first, uh, under the First Amendment, the government does not have a right to ban religious instruction. Um, my warrant here is that is the United States Constitution that states that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise. Uh, my reasoning here is that it is inconsistent to allow the parents to practice the religion, but then ban their children from receiving any ceremonies. Because, for example, if the parents go to church on Sunday, they can't bring their kids. If the parents on like want to go to a holiday church service, they cannot bring their kids. If they want to have a Bible study at home, they would not be allowed to do that under this resolution, which... First of all, pragmatically is not really possible, but if we were to consider a world in which it was somehow possible, this is um, really horrible and goes against freedom of choice. So another warrant is the Cam Cambridge University American Political Science Review, which was published May 2016, that states that the government can, should never pursue, no matter how compelling certain issues such as uh, religion, um, because individual rights um, exist in a realm that is supposed to be unbreachable. There's supposed to be a separation of church and state. And so religious instruction should not be banned because that would allow the government to, to trespass into a realm that it should not exist in. Um, the United States, States was founded on the idea of religious liberty, and it is um, a natural right of, the, of citizens. My claim, my second claim here is about parental rights. Um, this resolution takes away a parent's right to share their beliefs and values with their kids. My warrant here is from the Women's Law Journal published in 2013. There was a, there was a case in the Supreme Court called Myers v. Nebraska. And in the case, it found that the 14th Amer Amendment guarantees the right of the individual to establish a home and bring up children, worship in any way uh, that they uh, believe, uh, in any way they desire. So children will always be affected by how their parents raise them. Your parents' ideology, your parents, um, all the decisions that they make will influence kids, and it's nearly impossible to try to prevent that. And that doesn't go to that doesn't um, mean that the children, once they grow up, can't disagree with their parents. I'm sure a lot of you in this room disagree with your parents' points of view. Just because they shared those views with you doesn't mean that that is now your identity that you have to continue with. 
So, thus, children should not be banned from, re from receiving religious instruction because it threatens religious liberties and parental rights. This problem is huge. Um, within the last couple of years, religious freedoms and free speech have been under attack. Um, why do we have this problem? Really because of a lack of education, and oddly enough, I have the same resolution as of comparative religion, but I'm going to explain why it's more on my ground as the negative. Um, so according to the Pew Research Study conducted in 2010, only 36% of Americans understand that um, it's legal for public schools to teach comparative religion, which it's not that they teach religion, they teach about different religions. So um, they'll teach about all different kinds of religions, and really the benefit of that is that kids get to see actually how similar religions are, how different they are, but they understand and begin to respect one another in um, a really beneficial way. So the solution is to um, actually start offering this at all public schools because um, a lot of, uh, some public schools offer it, my public school offered this, but unfortunately a lot of schools don't because they're afraid to talk about religion. Um, but yeah, according to the U.S. Supreme Court, they have repeatedly said over and over again that once education is not complete without the study of comparative religion or the history of religion and that it is essential. So the solution will work because it has worked in other places. Um, I hate to use a personal anecdote, but I, in my high school, they did offer this program and everyone was really respectful and you learned about different religions. Um, the advantages is a more accepting society, upholding religious liberties, allowing families to perform religious traditions, and um, allowing the child to make the decision once they're older. Just because they're taught certain things, it's not going to completely impact their decision once they're older and they receive this education. So on balance, the, uh, the disadvantages of this proposal outweigh, so we should not affirm this resolution. Um, and children should not be banned from receiving religious instruction. I now stand open. I now stand open for cross-examination. Excellent. Thank you, Haley. It's nice to see you using the terminology of data, warrant, and claim. It's good. And just use the word impact a little bit more. Learned it from Drew. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Here we go. All right. Um, one of the founding principles of this country, along with religious freedom, is the um, freedom of speech. Now, um, our freedom of speech is not unlimited. It has limits. For example, you can't say fire in a movie theater or bomb on a plane. Um, and the reason our freedom of speech is limited is because it, that limitation is reasonable and it provides a, a benefit that outweighs the limitation. Through precedent, doesn't that mean religion can and should be limited to benefit society through reducing religious conflict? No, okay, so that example, um, you can't, so speech is limited to the point of where if you're harming people. If, for example, religion was actually causing physical harm <coughs> on children, then that obviously would not be legal or allowed. But, and also what you're saying of that religion should be limited in some ways isn't actually um, affirming the resolution because the resolution is to ban any kind of instruction, preaching, or ceremony. So that would be completely banning it, not limiting it. All right, and you also mentioned um, parental rights and how um, this ban would be limiting parental rights. Um, there, there are already um, several um, government uh, rules in place that um, regarding parenting such as sending kids to school because it's beneficial for them. Um, couldn't we limit parental rights in a similar way? Well, the issue with uh, uniquely with this is that um, religion isn't inherently, uh, like you even said in your brief, it's not inherently um, harmful or wrong and if these children were negatively affected um, in an actual physical way, then of course that wouldn't be legal. Thank you. Let's have a rebuttal now, two minute rebuttal. Alright, my opponent
opponent has argued that freedom of religion and parental rights should not be limited and that parents should be able to teach their religion to their kids um, any way they wish. However, as we have seen, there are several um, aspects about religion that have um, caused problems throughout the world, throughout <coughs> history. Um, the benefits of reducing conflict and creating a more understanding and accepting society through education instead of instruction, preaching, or ceremony to children is worth the limiting religious, is worth limiting the religious freedom. Okay, thank you. Okay, and a rebuttal from Haley. Okay, so first my opponent states um, that I said that any way that parents should be able to teach their children in any way they wish. However, I disagree. That is not what I said. Um, because what? Because I, as the negative, am affirming the status quo in which there are laws protecting kids. So parents can't just do whatever they want. Um, so again, I am just trying to negate the resolution of that we should ban children from receiving religious instruction. Um, and then secondly, so my opponent states that the dangers of religion are more um, are more important than individual freedom. So that's where the clash in this round occurs. However, I disagree with this um, because currently with all the examples he brought up, like 9-11 and ISIS, a United States ban on children receiving religion is not going to solve these problems. He does not have solvency. In this case, that wouldn't just be if children didn't receive religious instruction, that would not have prevented ISIS, that would not have prevented 9 11. Um, therefore, therefore, we should not ban children from receiving uh, religious instruction. Thank you. So, also, my, um, my opponent. So overall, just a two-world scenario here. The world of the affirmative violates the First Amendment. It's a world where parents cannot share their values, beliefs, or traditions with their children. It's a world where children grow up unaware of religious references. Um, and it's a world where students do not learn about religions. However, in the world of the negative, we uphold the First Amendment. We allow parents to share their, with their kids their beliefs and attend ceremonies. It's a more accepting world where students learn about religions and make up their mind for themselves, just like so many of you probably have, even if you were raised in a religious household. Once you are old enough, you can leave your religion, if you wish. Thank you. Okay. Cross the house, shake hands, and be a good sport. Take your seats in the front, and we'll give you feedback up there. It's now time for the judges to vote. And we'll handle this procedure since we have a little bit more time, a little differently. We will uh, take your ballots, and then we'll ask you each to say a word to the uh, each side of uh, how they what you like about their argumentation <coughs> and something they could do to improve. Be sure to sign it. Be sure you filled out a side. Yeah, sign your name. That's what it says. Read it for the signature. Judge's name and affiliation. Thank you. Do I have them all? No, no not yet. Keep me, keep me coming, ladies and gentlemen. Why do you fill it out if you don't have a decision? <laughs>
Okay. On a one to sixteen decision, the decision goes to the opposition, which would be Haley. And now, as is our tradition, we'll start in the rear and stand up, say your name, and make a comment to both debaters, something you like and something they could improve on. Hi, my name is Ryan. Hi, Hi Ryan. Um, and I'll preface it by, I was not here for a part of it, but from what I had heard, uh, especially in the ending, Haley, your argument, uh, it was very convincing, it was very passionate, and that's what I, that's ultimately why I voted in that favor. Okay. Um, for yours, it was also very good, very passionate. Yours meaning the affirmative. Correct, the affirmative. Russell. Russell. Um, however, I would like to see the when we were doing the midterm, one of the things that kept coming up was credibility, maybe more credibility in the facts that we were presenting. Okay. Yes, please. Hi, my name is Armand. Hi, Armand. Um, Russell, I think you did a fantastic job. Uh, one thing that I would improve on is uh, present yourself better, be more confident when you're up there. Uh, like, you know, I, I noticed you were kind of just like this, but maybe have more passion, like he said, kind of move your body, like communicate with the audience. Um, also, you really want to, again, change the tone of your voice when uh, you want the audience to understand one of your points better. Um, so I think just kind of your uh, delivery is something that you should improve on. Haley, I think your evidence was really strong. Your rebuttal was uh, very effective. And um, your presentation was terrific. Uh, you know, you, you didn't really rely on your brief that much, and your eye contact was uh, great, and it really kept me engaged. It's a great job. Yeah, let me uh, just add something uh, to what Armand had just said, which is, in case you didn't notice, Haley used the four <laughs> steps of refutation, and she, they said, I disagree because therefore, and her therefore went to the resolutions, therefore we should not ban uh, children from receiving these religious uh, instructions. So uh, I like that very much. You notice also the whole notion of A-R-E or data warrant and claim that she used her, very much had her assertions and her warrants were very clearly labeled. The only thing, my only suggestion is just a little better impact on, just make, say the word impact at the end of your warrants. Yes, please. Hi, Miriam. Hi, Miriam. Hi, Miriam. Yeah, so I thought, like, Russell's evidence was really good, and I loved Haley's, um, like, personal anecdote. I think that was really good. Um, just for, like, improvement, I think maybe we <coughs> kind of did this, too, but, like, our rebuttals were um, maybe not, like, as aggressive as, um, like, a debate should be, but it's fertile. Right. One thing we notice is, and I want you, the rest of you to do more in rebuttals than just a single point rebutted. You notice that Haley rebutted three points. And let's have more refutation and rebuttals. Use the full two minutes. Hello. Hi, my name is Emily. Hi, Emily. Um, I wanted to say that, Russell, I thought your, um, your points were really good. I agree with what Armand said about varying your tone of voice more makes it more engaging for the audience. Um, and then Haley, I really liked um, your personal anecdote, but as well as the fact that um, you were very persuasive um, in your delivery. So. Thank you. Yes, please. Um, hi, I'm Nahi. 
Hi, uh, Nahi. Uh, just like what a lot of the audience has already mentioned, I thought Russell's evidence were really good, but what made me <coughs> my, like ultimately was Haley's rebuttal that was like very well presented, and I could tell she was passionate about the topic, she knew what she was talking about, so that really convinced me. Good. Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Yaksh. Hi, Hi Yaksh. Uh, so I thought both the debates were great. Um, Russell really emphasized on uh, a certain few issues, including like social repercussions, warfare, um, and just a sort of philosophical perspective that I kind of enjoyed. But unfortunately, I just didn't see how it all sort of tied in back to why children shouldn't re receive that instruction at the end of the day, while your argumentation was sound, just didn't seem to link up. As well, uh, Haley, on the other hand, I thought it was great that you tied it back to the constitutional rights, um, freedom of speech, and really trying to resonate with all our rights as well, and it kind of brought the whole point home. So, great job. Thank you, Yak. Hi, it's Meijing. Um, What's your name? Meijing. Meijing. Hi, Meijing. And I think, like, in the presentation part, like, the Russia is better than Haley, but, like, in the question part, you are better than like the guys do. Like when you presentation like the logic is like a little confusing but I still want you win. <laughs> okay. So maybe she could slow down a little, huh? To be clear. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's like because like when you say like the example you say like let's imagine if we do that, do that, do that, do that, what will go and happen. But like the Russian part is like from like the resource, maybe just like a example. But you just like imagine well, if we do what 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 it's not like persuasive, so the okay. presentation part you can That's good anything. feedback. Thank you. Elizabeth. Um, so yeah, I mean, I uh, liked your evidence oh, sorry, and like, your Rosemary. structure was really good and organized, so I was kind of able to follow what was going on and stuff, so I really liked that. Um, but for you, yeah, it's just, uh, I liked your evidence and stuff, but I thought you could have even pulled, like, more into, like, what a government would look like without any religious instruction or for kids. Like, I think you could have used, like, an example from history where a government has promoted that. I think you could have made your argument even stronger if you had done that. That's a good point. Yes, sir. Can you lose the hat? Oh, yeah, okay. Hi, my name's, my name's Paul. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. All right, and, uh, yeah, Russell, I really liked your presentation, your speech. Uh, I liked your use of ethos and logos. Uh, yeah, it's just, I think you had a lot, of, uh, a, lot of, a lot of good evidence to back what you're trying to prove, and I like how you try to be as credible as possible, but there's one thing to improve on. Uh, I had that same problem, too, where when I talk, I don't really have as much energy. I'm not high energy and it's something that I guess we can both work on. And uh, Maybe you can work on it together. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll get Starbucks later. Okay. So, so hey, Haley. Alright, so Haley. Uh, Go ahead. Okay, Haley, I like your charisma. I like your cross-examinations and you were, pa you were pa or at least you seemed like you were passionate about the subject and uh, if you can like it exude that energy that's kind of cool so yeah thanks and thanks yeah. not only was she passionate but I thought she was organized and easy to follow yes please uh, hi class my name is Emin hi Emin hi, Emin. Emin. I really like I really like both presentations <coughs> Russell you obviously had an uphill battle uh, this topic is especially in a country like this where freedom of religion is like in our constitution um, one thing you can improve on, like Armand, I'm not going to repeat what Armand said. And Haley, try to breathe. You were getting, at the end, you were just getting red, and I was like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> breathing helps, but awesome job, guys. Hyperventilate, huh? <laughs> yes, please. I think it's a white person thing, I get the same thing. <laughs> 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 but um, I really liked all of your evidence that you had, Haley, and what made me pick you was because like you guys both had the same solution and um, it worked better in your favor than it did in yours and um, I think you can work on your delivery and also like slow down a little. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, my name is John. Hi Thank John. You, off, I think you both did a good job. Um, Russell, I think if you would have kind of established more of a causal relationship between religion and violence, it could have worked in your favor a lot more. 
And then Haley, I think you could have hammered more on just the Constitution because that kind of, you know, debunks that freedom aspect. Yeah. Yeah, that was a, you know that that was the important thing to argue for, and that's a difficult thing to get at. Hi, yes, my please. name is Nilo. Hi, Nilo. Hi, Nilo. So I think you guys both did really great on the fact that this was religion, and religion's very touchy. So, Russell, I really appreciated how you went about things. The only problem I had was that I wasn't following your solution, so, which Natalie left me to vote for Haley. Haley, I thought you did great. Everything you said linked back in the end, and your evidence was great. Okay, here we go here. Hi, my name is Salad. Hi, Salad. I think they both did a good What's her name? Job. Salad. Hi. Uh, but my friend, he mentioned that the... Hold your paper down so I can see your face. Why we need to ban the child for receiving the regions. Um, I understand her points why it really will pose a bad effect for the children. But Haley, um, she showed that the bad effect is not enough for us to ban all the children to we say the religion's rules because um, it will like it will make the parent cannot share their belief with their children. So I think Haley did a really good job because she showed us that um, the bad effect is not enough to make us to ban all of this. Okay. Children to we see the religion's rules. Thank you, Salad. Thank you. Yes, please. Hi, I'm Jared. I'm Hi, Jared. Jared. Um, so, Russell, I thought you had a really well-rounded <coughs> argument, but um, kind of in your initial presentation, I was already kind of finding holes in it, um, and those holes were obviously picked up by Haley, who just hammered right into them and um, in the rebuttal, which is why that's where she excelled. So I think if you just had considered a little bit more um, the opposition's argument, then you would have probably had a tighter seal. Um, and then Haley, I thought um, you did really well, and obviously, as everyone said, your rebuttal was really strong, which ultimately, for me, put me on your side. Um, and then also, even though you said that the personal antidotes could potentially um, be an issue, especially in this debate, as it's easy to invalidate those, um, I think that you did a good job at not relying on them, but actually providing evidence and then bringing those in as kind of an afterthought, so they didn't really um, put your argument in jeopardy. So. Yeah, let's remember that. Let's not rely on, you know, the guy at the liquor store told me <laughs> that, you know. <laughs> Let's hear from you that well, this is true. I, I'm Gil. Hi, Gil. Uh, Russell took on probably the, one of the most emotional subjects in the list. Uh, this is a very, uh, how can I say, uh, emotional subject on children and parents. And he did a very good job. But I think Haley came back and really brought out all the points. I mean, you have not only the government that is very specific on religion, but you also had the point of parent guiding the children. And I think it isn't sometimes the specific religion, but how the parents raise the children as to what the problems in the future will be. Right. And it's, you know, it's, it, thank you, Gail. And it's really getting at this whole thing about the nanny state and the federal government going even right. further and becoming our new parents. Exactly. Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Jared. Hi, Jared. Jared. Uh, Russell, I think you did a good job. Um, I think you provided a lot of evidence. I just think that in linking your evidence. Ooh, I have to turn you off, Jared. The